This video is sponsored by Clipbox. Have you ever wanted K-pop merch and Korean snacks sent directly to your door? Clipbox is this awesome K-pop subscription box that offers themed boxes from groups such as BTS, Blackpink, EXO, and TWICE, and are currently in the process of adding Red Velvet, GOT7, Monster X, Stray Kids, and so much more. You can customize the box by selecting one or more biases to fit your preference. They also offer a variety of items ranging from apparel, stationery, keychains, posters, and so much more. You can grab your box by clicking on the link below and enter Enter code MIDNIGHT for 5% off. 400 auditions, 170 participants, 70 agencies, and 16-hour shooting days. What could possibly go wrong? Hi everyone, and welcome back to Midnight Theories, and if you're new here, welcome to Midnight Theories. It's Survival Show Season once again, so I've been re-inspired to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly surrounding these types of programs. So I thought we'd start off the conversation with YG Entertainment's failed attempt at a survival show known as Mix 9, and find out exactly why it was so unsuccessful and became the laughing stock of survival programs. If you don't want any spoilers, even though this show came out years ago, or if you're interested in one particular topic, I have each subject neatly separated into segments so you can easily skip around the video. Mix 9 was a collaborative survival reality show produced by Papa YG himself, Young Hyun Suk, and infamous PD Hang Dong Chol, better known for producing Show Me The Money, Unpretty Rap Star, and the Produce 101 series. And if you don't know how that went, you might want to check out my trilogy covering the dark inner workings behind the scenes. Mix 9 captivated our attention by having our eyes glued to our screens every week, airing from October 29, 2017 to January 26, 2018. The main premise of the show was to have the 170 male and female contestants compete against each other where only one gendered group would win the chance to debut in the show's final group, but we'll get into more detail later. The first half of the show was labeled Enter Tour Step. This particular portion would be focused on the audition process. Instead of the auditionees traditionally gathering at a designated location, such as an audition hall, Young Hyun Suk would personally travel to each agency, which seems a little counterintuitive. It was almost hard to believe that so many agencies existed. Even Young mentioned it himself. During the audition process, Young would be accompanied by a guest judge, the show's host, and two huge buses. From the hand-selected trainees that passed, they would be separated into two teams. Bus 1 would carry the trainee team, which was generally for anyone who passed, while Bus 2 carried the debut team. This bus was only for the top 9 trainees, who Young believed had the potential to debut straight away. Once the agency tours concluded, we entered the competition step, where the trainees were then divided into four classes. Debut Team, A Team, B Team, and C Team. Each week, the contestants would compete against each other in ranking missions and evaluated by the judge and voted by viewers. Now that we're familiar with the basic structure of the show, let's get into the major issues that led the show to fail and why it was dubbed the worst survival program ever. Before the show even aired, promotions for Mix 9 left the potential audience confused about how it was presented in the press conference and teasers. The idea was to create a new group, but instead of solely using YG trainees like in previous YG survival shows, Young was searching for new talent to mold them to be YG style, whatever that means. This also confused viewers if Young was personally poaching these auditionees, since there was no information at the time surrounding the extent of activities. Would the winning team be a permanent group or similar to produce groups under a collaborative contract? I will mention, in earlier days, for a brief moment, there was an announcement that the group would be permanent, and if any contestant was already active, they may have to leave their existing group. Afterwards, a notice appeared on Mix 9's official Twitter page addressing the controversies and stated that a permanent group was originally planned, but after some consideration, they decided to go with a temporary route. There is also the confusion revolving around the teams. If you were a new viewer going in blind, it wasn't clear what type of group the show would debut and could be a little misleading with the title and mixed contestants. I will admit, when I first heard the title Mix 9 and saw the mixed gendered contestants, I assumed each trainee were competing for one of the nine spots on a co-ed group. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Which brings us to... As I mentioned earlier, this was a battle of the sexes, where the boys team and girls team were competing not only between themselves, but the opposing gender. Whichever team had the most accumulated votes in the finale would determine if the show would debut a boy group or girl group. This aspect of the show was to add a layer of competitiveness with the trainees and add some extra edge ranking in an audience since the show was competing for views with The Unit, another survival program airing around the same time. With that information in hand, netizens went rampant online, declaring the show was unfair. Generally, and statistically speaking, in the K-pop industry, boy groups have the highest success rate and tend to have a more loyal, stronger, and larger fan base. Standing the test of time, unlike most girl groups who usually disband due to loss of interest or quote, age out. Keep this in mind for later because the show only perpetuates this way of thinking. 
So in this particular competition, it was assumed the boy group would have the upper hand since the audience was overwhelmingly female. But fret not girl group stands, there were some thunderous loud cheers from fanboys desperately trying to out cheer the competition. In the first round in episode 4, there was a close ratio between the boys team and girls team where the boys team ended with a little over 500,000 votes and the girls winning with a whopping 520,000. So in the meantime, the angry mob of netizens paused their rampage to see how this would play out further, but ultimately in episode 5, the debate was rekindled. There was also a rising concern over Young's attitude and comments specifically targeting the female contestants. Bringing back the whole age out comment I made earlier, in episode 2, former Coco Sori member Sori auditioned with the project group Grill Girls Project. When it was her turn for solo evaluations, the first thing he mentioned was her age. <laughs> He further continued to nitpick at her career choices and belittle the desperate idol for what could very well be her last shot to launch her career. His harsh remarks made netizens furious for critiquing her age instead of her abilities. And his remarks seemed a little hypocritical since former YG Girl Group 21, members Dada and Bomb debuted at age 25, and there have been other successful and well-known female idols who debuted in their mid to late 20s. This wasn't the only time a female contestant's age was brought up in the show. In episode 7, guest judge Seungri also pointed out Trini Hangyeol's age. <laughs> It's just sad to see that on screen only the female trainees' ages were brought up, but never some of the male contestants who were considerably older. Not that I'm saying that any of them should be age shamed, it just goes to show how female idols have more obstacles and hurdles to make it as an idol with a shorter time frame. Situation aside, there was even more questionable behavior from Young, or at least editing wise, which was during the audition process that made viewers at home increasingly uncomfortable. <laughs> In episode 1, after a long day of auditions, A100's Neon Punch enters the room and lights up the biggest smile on Young's face, overly smitten in front of these young girls. As the audition continues, guest judge CL seems to notice his odd behavior and brings it up. Moments later, he jokingly makes the remark, Why don't YG singers do that for me? To which CL replies, You won't like it if I do it. Which is most likely true since Young has a history of repeatedly calling the members of his own girl group 21 ugly. According to one of the edits of the show, we are supposed to watch these clips of Young looking at these young contestants from a fatherly figure point of view. But there is a fine line that could be crossed where many viewers felt the comments and gazes teeter between fatherly to almost creepy. Yet, these type of edits were still sprinkled throughout the show. And if you haven't watched my Purdue series, I touched on the fact that PD Hang Dong Chol, the same PD to produce both Mix 9 and Produce 101, made a highly inappropriate comment back in 2016 during an interview with High Cut Magazine for his alleged misunderstood comment, calling Produce 101 a wholesome P-word. He later apologized for this comment, but it doesn't disregard that majority of the contestants on the survival program are minors, and he still chose to have these words come out of his mouth, and somehow he was still able to work in the industry on the same show and similar programs. This subject can be an entire video on its own, but I must regrettably move on. At this point, the show continued to receive criticism. The next subject up to bat was the quote, poor judging and favoritism. Netizens began to target Young's way of judging and claim he was unqualified to be a judge on his own show because of well. <laughs> Which CL jokingly replies that she believes this is an unfair evaluation. I mean, that's one way to judge if that's his preference. But at least we at home could feel safe that the trainees would tell and skills would shine through and be able to pass, right? 
Young would at times criticize and dismiss trainees who were extremely talented and skillful, depending on Young's mood, thus completely betraying the viewer's desires to see well-rounded or skilled trainees. There was also the situation during Fave Entertainment segment where he made a point to exclude previous trainees who appeared on survival shows. For example, trainee Heedem appeared on Superstar K six years ago. This way of judging turned out to be inconsistent too, with another trainee, Izu Min, passing even though she participated in season 1 of Produce 101 and K-Pop Star season 4 in 2017, as well as Hyo Chan Mi, who appeared on season 1 of Produce 101 and Finding Momoland in 2016. Seems a little hypocritical if you ask me, but that's just my personal opinion. Similar to most survival shows where dozens, or in this case, 200 trainees all compete for the same dream, finding a few seconds of screen time is incredibly hard. Imagine trying to stand out or showcase your abilities on screen before getting the boot. It's one thing to pass as many deserving and talented youths as you can in theory, but the downside is, majority of the viewers are not willing to seek out the remaining or lesser known contestants who don't show up on screen to properly evaluate or vote based on skill or whatever their preference is. Let's say you do get your 5 seconds of fame or screen time. It may not always be in the trainee's best interest, thus bringing us to evil editing. If you're a self-proclaimed survival show veteran watcher like myself, we are all familiar with the phrase evil editing, or in some cases called devil editing. But if you're not, evil editing is an editing tactic to purposely portray a cast member in a negative light, to villainize them in the eyes of the viewer. For Mix 9, a couple of trainees received such edit, but most recognizable were Aidy, also known as Yujin, and O&O Entertainment's Youngche. In Aidy's case, she was given the storyline that she hates idols and idol life, but the biggest irony is her auditioning for the show in the first place since the main prize is to debut in an idol group. Also, the way she is edited makes it seem like she hates everything and everyone. In Young Che's case, she is shown to come off as greedy and jealous of her fellow trainees and competitors. Her behavior was even commented on by Young in a later episode. In this case, Young doubled down in his response that this wasn't a case of evil editing, but showed how she actually behaved in person. If the show couldn't get any worse, we arrive at the final episode. A total of 36 boys and girls desperately compete on stage before the top 9 of each team is announced. The show throws in some performances and VTRs milking every second before the announcement. But once live votes close, the top 9 are announced and both Oh Jin Young and Shin Ryo Jin rank first place in their respective teams. All that is left is to find out which team would officially make their debut. As we arrive at the climax, the moment everyone is waiting for, as predicted, the boys team won, with the final score of 8,114 and the girls falling shortly behind with 7,866 votes. Winning a competition such as Mix 9 was a huge milestone for the top 9 boys. The three grueling months of training and competing seemed worth it in the end, and each individual winner were internally grateful. Since the boys team won, they were predicted to debut in April of 2018 and beginning their domestic activities, which made fans instantly hyped up for their debut and were expected to have one of the biggest and well-anticipated debuts of the year. After the show wrapped up in January, fans patiently waited for months for any information or updates on the winning team. Not even an official group name had been announced yet. In March, to the overwhelming comments and questions made by concerned fans, he informed the public that they still needed to work out a debut plan with the other agencies, which meant the company or companies were working sluggishly behind the scenes for the past two months. When it came to the winners and the agencies, they claimed that they had yet to receive any information about their debut. The winners also claimed that they were working on personal activities in the meantime, but they weren't doing anything related to their debut. With no information on the group name or debut song, the boys were growing increasingly anxious, thinking the debut might be cancelled. Even these rumors began to consume the fandom, fearing the worst. On May 3rd, 2018, news surfaced that YG had regular meetings with the representatives. While planning the debut, allegedly, YG presented a three-year contract with a plan to release an album every year, including 15 songs, and work in Korea and abroad for six months out of the year and returning to their agencies for the remaining six months. Allegedly, some agencies rejected the proposal because it seemed difficult to participate with the demands and found it to be burdensome. Many wanted to go with the original contract, which was for the group to promote for four months with overseas promotions. With so many information pouring out at once, YG had to step in and do some damage control and release an official press release regarding Mix 9. 
YG Entertainment had regretfully announced the winning team from Mix9 would not make their expected debut. The reason for canceling the debut was because the show unfortunately did not receive as much attention as expected. While the show was airing, Mix9 was struggling to keep an audience with a rating as low as 1%, with most of its popularity coming from abroad. So in an attempt to switch things around, officials announced the final group would go on a world tour, planning to hit 20 to 30 overseas cities from April to December of 2018. This was their attempt to retain retention rate by targeting an overseas market. When it came to the discussion of the contract, termination was expected to depend on several variables, such as the popularity and response of the program. And comedically enough, it was also not guaranteed that the final group would even complete the entire world tour and could have some of the schedules completed by the runner-up team. Each week, these invested and devoted fans voted for their favorite contestants, and with the news of the canceled debut, angry fans began to protest and demand a refund for the text vote fee. Even former contestants spoke out on the injustice. If you felt the fans and the contestants felt robbed by this decision, you can only imagine how the companies and winners felt. Happy Faces Woo Jin Young was supposed to debut in the center for the new group. Following the announcement, Happy Face Entertainment began filing a lawsuit against YG for 10 million won for compensation and damages. The court case bled into 2019, where neither party wanted to back down. Happy Face Entertainment claimed that YG neglected the members and did not even mention any plans for the team's debut, even after two months since the show ended. While YG Entertainment claimed it wasn't quote mandatory for them to debut the group in the first place, and it was also during this time that YG had debuted a new survival show called YG's Treasure Box. This made several parties upset, especially Happy Face, and brought it up asking if YG would throw out Treasure's debut if the show fell like Mix 9. Either way you looked at it, the situation was messy. But after a long legal battle, Happy Face withdrew from the lawsuit and settling out of court. Mix 9 was a train wreck waiting to happen. Since the beginning, YG Entertainment made several false promises and lacked direction and structure. Sadly, they gambled with these contestants' career for months. A lot of people were relying on this program, and for many, this may have been their last chance to survive in the industry. It's been four years since the show took place, and it's still rated as one of the worst survival programs to air. YG Entertainment brazenly aired a survival show the following year, called YG Treasure Box and has since debuted the winning team, but not without complications. But do you believe YG Entertainment has redeemed themselves from the unfortunate events of Mix 9, or should they stop doing survival shows altogether? Did you see any of the red flags that could have foreshadowed the tragic end of the show? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Once again, thank you to Clubbox for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to grab your box by clicking on the link below and enter code MIDNIGHT for 5% off. And as always, thank you for watching and enjoy your stay.